Welcome back to your favorite motorcycle podcast. I call that bold talk for a one-eyed fat man. Well, all right then. We're talking about planning and is the winter the best time to buy a motorcycle? Welcome to Indian Motorcycle Radio. And I'm your host, Reverend Ken Blanchard. This is the show about Indian motorcycles and the people that ride and love them. Life is a highway, and you have to plan for it. Riding motorcycles is not something we do, not necessarily. It's something that we are as well. And one of the things that we sometimes miss is patience. You know, patience brings inner peace into your life. Being impatient not only brings unnecessary frustration, it also significantly stresses you out. And research has shown that stress is just doggone bad for your health. Now, if you add that to the beauty of riding a motorcycle, the passion of riding a motorcycle. You want more inner peace, less stress. You want your mind and body to work together as you enjoy your ride. You with me? Patience is the ability to endure difficult circumstances such as perseverance in the face of delay, tolerance of provocation without responding in annoyance or anger, forbearance when under strain, especially when faced with longer-term difficulties. Patience is the level of endurance one can have before negativity. Just for a moment, I want you to think about planning for that next ride. I know it's cold and nobody's going anywhere in some of the places in this country, but there are some places still left to ride to. There's still some good days left. And if you were going to plan a trip, what are some of the things that you would do to plan? I got five. Gas mileage, Maintenance, your stops, your emergency plan, and mapping your route. That seems too easy, right? But how many of you know how many miles your bike can take on a full tank? Have you mapped that out yet? Have you tested the limit with maybe um, somebody riding behind you or a gas station nearby when you got down to the fumes? You might want to do that. Next time you get on, plan a trip to see how far your bike actually goes on a full tank of gas. It's a good thing to know. And then it depends on a few factors, of course, the load, your tire pressure, all that good stuff. Maintenance. Do you actively check out your stuff or do you just wait till that once a year? Take it to the shop, let them do their thing, and then you just take it on back home. Do you do your own checks? Do you make sure... Nothing has vibrated loose, that nothing has fell off, that uh, nothing is stuck, that nothing is um, lower than it should be, that nothing is higher than it should be. Have you checked a few things on a daily basis? On that next trip, when you map that thing out, do you know where the gas stations are? Stuff to think about. And now, the emergency stuff. Everybody has a different plan. But if you were just going to go by yourself, Is somebody expecting you at a certain time? Does somebody know where you went in case, I don't know, a meteor fell from the sky and knocked you off your bike? Who do you call? You got a plan in case you get a flat, a spill? You know, prior proper planning prevents piss poor performance. You can ride a whole lot more easier when you got a few things taken care of in your head. Emergencies only happen when there's a uh uh-oh. And you don't have a plan. But when you have a plan, man, everything's smooth sailing. All right, so you mapped your route out. You know where your stops are. You know where the gas is. You know where the food is. You know where you're going to go in case of a storm, in case of a civil disobedience, in case of, uh, I don't know, meteor shower. Those little things, they don't have to be in a book or anything. Just in your head. Just in case. Now, that's the long trip, right? That's the pretty trip. That's the trip where you're going to spend a couple of hours on the bike. But how about your daily ride? Your commute. Same thing applies. Your tank's on half. You know you can ride until, bam, whatever that time is. You already checked your bike out today. Yep, before you got on it. 
make sure nobody's playing no practical jokes that's not really funny. You know where the gas stations are on your way to work, on your way to wherever you're doing. Somebody is expecting you. They know you're riding your bike today. Just in case. Oh, you're riding with a friend, which is even better. And both of you got your stuff together. You know, back in the day, we didn't have cell phones. So the world didn't have a computer in your pocket. You didn't have a way to communicate with anybody around the world. But what if the signal is bad? And what if you don't have that 5G on your cell phone? They keep advertising for one company. I don't think I get the 3G in most places yet. Don't believe the hype. And are you ready for the rain, the snow, the sleet, the bees, the love bug invasion? Every region has its own thing. Dust storms, stuff that just can pop up. You got a little backpack, you got a little thing in the back somewhere on your bagger, somewhere on your person, somewhere stashed that you can get to in case the weather gets funky. Again, prior proper planning prevents pits poor performance. And it helps you with your patience. You know, your whole world can change in an instant when it goes from, oh, damn, to, oh, okay, I got that. You know where I learned this from? Not, not on a motorcycle, but fishing. For 28 years, I used to fish with the same five guys. Well, same three. The other two kind of alternated back and forth. And finally, after 28 years, they all passed away. But these old retirees used to take me along and we used to fish in the Chesapeake Bay here in Maryland, down near the Patuxent River. And I didn't care. I don't care what time of day it was or what season it was when we were fishing because we fished from about May till about November. They were ready. These old guys carried a couple of things. They carried their coolers. They carried a backpack. They carried... I don't know how they carried some of this stuff, but I don't care what happened in our eight hours of being together. They were ready for it. I remember multiple times when I got so excited to go fishing with these guys that I got my bait, I got my rod, I might even bought a new rod. I got a new hat, new sunglasses. I got some, um, you call that stuff you put on so you don't get sunburned. I got all this stuff right, and I forget my lunch. I would make it. I would spend some time putting together this thing and then leave it in my refrigerator. And I probably did that more than a hundred times in 28 years. It was ridiculous. I don't know how I always forgot my food, but that was like the least thing I cared about because I know I was going to eat. So sometimes I bought some food on the road before we got there. I buy like a really cheap sandwich that wasn't nearly as good as the meal that I had prepared for myself. But these old dudes would laugh. And then give me a piece of chicken or give me a bologna sandwich or give me uh, some canned meat. They all of them had like spare stuff. Made me feel bad every time. And sometimes I wouldn't even ask them, but they would go, you forgot your lunch again, didn't you? And then when I finally got over the lunch piece, it was the gear. I never had enough stuff. The day I was catching a cooler full of fish. I mean, fish were coming in the boat two and three at a time, almost running out of bait. Sometimes I'd get snagged and they would say, here, his new rig. Or when I'd buy a whole bunch of rigs, nothing would happen. I'd have all my lead shot and all my special number two hooks. And that'd be the day that all the fish were biting off with the gold color hooks, with the gold spinners or the ones with the yellow on it. Whatever it was, I didn't have it. But these old dudes did. I think I was like the gear private for a minute. As they got older, I was the one carrying all their crap. And I took it as a good exchange. Muscle for prep. Because you guys always got the stuff. And then we might be sitting there for hours and nothing bites. And they're starting to talk and tell the stories and stuff that I love. But after a while, I heard all of them. And didn't care. These guys were my natural history people. They were telling me about life between 1940 And now, it was amazing. And when the fish weren't biting, they would go, hey, I got some frozen squid. I'm going to pull this out of my cooler. Maybe the fish will bite on this for a minute. And sometimes it worked. Most of the time it didn't. The captain of the boat usually knew what was the best. But these guys were ready. 
and it made the trip so much more enjoyable. We caught so much fish in my 20 some years of, of being with them that I had to find people to give fish to. I had way more fish. I had fish stocked in my freezer. Wasn't even a fish eater that much. This is way before everybody got all into organic and healthy and stuff. We were just doing it for sport. And I thought, you know, if you catch 20 fish, that's enough for a big family. But when you're catching like 80 and 100, I had to adopt people to give fish to. And then they got like used to it. Like, okay, you going fishing again uh, next month? I'm putting in my order. It's like, uh, yeah, but it's not like that. And then as time went on, I guess we fished the place out because the numbers decreased, wasn't as uh, bountiful as it was. But we were prepared nonetheless, and it made the trip so much better. I know people who say, um, I don't see what you get out of fishing. I got so much out of it because everything that could go wrong and did go wrong was taken care of. When we ride, I don't care whether it's just to the grocery store, around the corner, to see a friend, or a long-distance cross-country ride, the better you prepare for it, the more enjoyable it'll be. And when you're not stressing about anything, man, does that increase your pleasure. But you got to be patient. Think things out. Remember, patience is the ability to idle your motor when you feel like stripping your gears. I'm hoping you got something out of that philosophical thing because that's what I do. Motivation check. How do you think I'm doing? on this here, your podcast for Indian Motorcycle Brotherhood. If you like what I'm doing, what I'm putting down, what I'm putting out, please share this with your riding buddies, with your friends. If you got ideas for shows, if you want some content advertising your business, contact me. This is for us. And if you want to do more, consider a small monthly donation to buymeacoffee.com forward slash motorcycles. The link will be in the show notes. Encouragement, welcome. Now I'm sitting here staring out the window, as I do most of the times when I'm not teleworking. I'm wondering, what's the best time to buy a motorcycle? Well, the best time to buy a motorcycle is when the prices are right, of course. And the worst time to buy a motorcycle is obviously just before it's heavily discounted. But how can you know when a discount promotion is coming? That is the $100 question. The best days to buy a motorcycle... Hmm, I know I'm in the market. How about you? If you already got your ride, then you are a blessed mug. But for the rest of us, we're out here trying to figure it out. Most people consider the time of year, this time of year, would be a good time to go. It seems like weekdays are typically slower at a dealership. So maybe to promote sales Monday through Thursday, you might be better off shopping then. I'm thinking this winter. This cold time right now might be a good time to buy a motorcycle. February is a short month, might be the best month of all during the winter when to buy a bike and dealerships probably need to hit their quota and might go the extra mile if you can hold off that long. And it's not that far from spring. But now we got Black Friday, after Christmas, and even online stuff right now. You know, some of the biggest deals of the year take place on Black Friday. Maybe where you're looking might try to sell something. And even private sellers might be willing to negotiate for a quick sale for some quick holiday cash. That's my guess for right now. Now, after Christmas, dealers are looking to get rid of some excess stock. So that might be a good time to go looking for that new Indian that you always wanted. All the critics say that the best time of the year is to buy during the winter when the sun is gone and temperatures below freezing and motorcycles aren't exactly top of mind unless you're a member and a listener to Indian Motorcycle Radio, that is, of course. But that means less traffic in their shops and the potential for lower prices. Unless you're in Florida, where you can ride all year long. But, you know, buying a motorcycle during the winter is not ideal for everybody. If conditions aren't safe to ride and you aren't close enough to your destination to take a quick ride in the cold, you might want to wait too. 
Sometimes June, I hear, is a good time, which totally just contradicts the whole thing about being in the winter. But I'm going to say, of all the six bikes that I've owned, I bought them around this time, around November is when I bought them. I bought one. It was actually snowing. I caught a guy who was going on deployment with the Army, and he had a a Harley Nighthawk. Was it Nighthawk? Night. Night glide. Yes, yeah, a night glide. It was all blacked out, had like purple lights on it. It was it was the bomb. My first Harley. And he had to go somewhere. So he was he had it on the back of his truck and he was taking it to a dealership for a consignment and he's running out of time. And he caught me in a good mood with good credit. And my wife was still nice to me back then. I was able to get that thing off that trailer. And hit the credit union and bam, there I was. Christmas present to myself. Right now, I'm sure there's somebody going through some life's hardships that might uh, be willing to part with their bike. I see a couple of them, extra ones on Facebook Marketplace that normally wouldn't be there. None of them are close to me. But I'm going to hold out. I'm going to hold out a few more weeks and see what I can find. You know, 2021s are 30,000 plus. And I was complaining about that until I looked at pickup trucks the other day. You know, you can get a brand new top of the line pickup truck for like $80,000. Yeah. Money ain't what it used to be. I bought my first house for $63,000. Inflation, recession, depression, all that stuff, man. Good googly moogly. So they got these 2021s out, right? They're $40,000 almost. They are worth it, but damn. I'm talking about the Roadmasters. I'm sure that the model that you want probably don't cost that much, but golly, 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 golly. According to um, this one article that I was checking out, it says that the influx, influx of new toys obviously causes a stir within the dealerships and shakes the market up a little bit. And then suddenly people aren't flocking to look at the outdated models at new bike dealers. Just like any upstanding family unit, the older sibling isn't getting the attention they used to and are starting to look a little less appealing. They suddenly start taking up floor space that could be put to better use and the dealer will look to drop the price and sell while he still can. This has a very different effect on the used bike market. As people buy the new models, they trade the old ones in and the secondhand dealers see a lot more of them on their floors. As with any market, a saturation of the same product will mean sellers start competing on price to make theirs stand out. Sellers may try to sell their older models quickly before there are so many of them available secondhand and they decrease in value. When there are so many of them suddenly available, you can afford to be picky and find the best one. So dealers know this, so they're trying to sell at attractive prices to stand out in the crowd. And I'm looking for that myself. If you know of somebody who uh, is selling a Roadmaster in a solid color, let me know. Between, uh, let's see, 2018 and 2020, that'll work. But the price got to be right, you know, because I am cheap. I'm so cheap I take my glasses off when I'm not looking. I'm so cheap I married a skinny girl so I could buy a smaller ring. I'm so cheap I wear my suit so long they've been in style five times. Yeah, but let me stop lying. I got champagne taste, but I uh, got a wallet that all can afford. Miller High Life. Yeah, the champagne of beers. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Miller Beer. Miller tastes too good to hurry through. But when it's time to relax, when it's time to relax, Miller stands clear. Beer after beer. If you've got the time, what do you say? You've got the time, we've got the beer. Miller beer. That's some good stuff right there. Yeah, and some good stuff right here. Thank you for being here this week. I'm hoping that everything is all right in your camp. And just a reminder to Joe, I got your stickers. Your decal, man, is on the way. I just got to find a stamp and put this thing in a box probably tomorrow. 
A big thumbs up and a shout out to my brother Jeff for supporting me through buymeacoffee.com. Prayers are going out to Rick, who is going through, and uh, all of you who are on our Facebook page that have shown me your bikes and allow me to use your photos. Y'all making me so envious, so jealous. And like my wife told me yesterday, she sees my point that I am full of crap. Thank you, fellas, for riding with a brother one more time. I'll catch you again next week. All right, my friends, that's it for this week. I want to thank you for listening, downloading, and subscribing to your favorite righteous podcast, Indian Motorcycle Radio. Now may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon you. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Kick stands up. Let's ride. Let's ride.